Hi, my name is Olivia, and I run a risograph print shop called Pin Dot Press in Oakville, Ontario, near Toronto, Canada. In this tutorial, I will show you how to set up art in Photoshop for riso printing, and also show you some examples from friends. The first thing to remember is that files must be converted to grayscale when you submit them to the printer. So let's create a new file and say that the artwork will be 10 by 16 inches and at least 300 pixels per inch. There are many ways to create the color separations for your artwork um, as long as they're separated by color in the end. You can work backwards from a color image and isolate the colors using channels. But if you are, say, making an illustration, it would be just a lot easier to work in layers of color to begin with. So the first way you can create various values of color is by using opacity. So let's pick a color that is pretty close to the color chart. You can find one online or pin.press can also mail you one. Just send us an email at pin.press at gmail.com. I personally think it's fine to eyeball the color in Photoshop and it doesn't have to be an exact match and you don't need to pull up a special color library or swatch for it. For example, this blue kind of looks like this blue. So I'm just going to run with it. So I'm going to start by making a new layer for blue and I'm going to make brush strokes with various opacities. And this is at 69%, set 39, set 17. Then I'm going to make another layer for yellow and just pick a yellow um, this yellow, it looks, it looks like that yellow, so we can use it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make brush strokes with different opacities. To preview how this is going to more or less look once it's printed, select your layers and use multiply, which takes one layer's colors and overlaps them with another layer's colors. So this is actually a pretty, it's actually a pretty accurate preview of what this combination of this shade of blue will look with this shade of yellow. So to convert this art to grayscale, um, I'm going to select yellow, the yellow layer, and I'm going to make sure my background color over here is black, right there. Um, you can change you can change the background color by just clicking on it and just making it black. Then I'm going to use Control Shift Backspace or Control Shift Delete, and it's going to convert your color layer into the appropriate grayscale values for printing in Rezo. I'm going to do the same for blue. The Mac commands are, I'm assuming that's command shift delete 
or command shift backspace. And that's it. You can send the printer this file um, or export each layer as a, a higher quality PDF and give it to your printer and they will print this with with a rezo and it'll it'll look fairly close to your artwork. The second way to make various values of color is to use solid 100% opacity colors but in various tints and shades, so lightness and darkness. So let me demonstrate that to you now. Create a blue layer and a yellow layer. So let's start with blue. Um, so with blue, I'm just going to make some brush strokes. And this time, I'm going to keep opacity at 100%, but I'm just going to make it lighter and lighter. This is, this is a little bit harder to keep accurate because um, you don't want it to be like a lighter shade of a different blue because that might decrease your accuracy. And for yellow, I'm going to use that yellow and um, I'll do the same. So here's like solid yellow and like lighter yellow, like um, really light yellow. And then once again, I'm going to apply the multiply filter. So as you can see, it's very similar to the opacity method. Unfortunately, because control shift delete only works on opacity, using it here on 100% opacity brush strokes will only yield black. So let me show you what I mean. If I control or command click on the layer icon to select the brush strokes in this layer and hit control shift backspace it's just going to be black so what you'll need to do is find another way to convert it to grayscale and let me uh, undo that and the way to convert it to grayscale that I know of is to use an adjustment layer. Um, so I'm going to click on blue and I'm going to make a black and white adjustment layer. And I'm gonna do the same as well. Let me just isolate the yellow and I'm gonna do the same for yellow because there's something important to talk about here. So the way Ariza works is black means print solid and white means no printing and shades of gray means various densities of ink with darker meaning more yellow and lighter meaning e less yellow so as you can see yellow when converted to grayscale will look very light in order to print a very bright solid yellow you will need to adjust this to be darker you can use the slider in the black and white adjustment layer to darken the ink as you see fit. So because we are coloring in the yellow brush strokes and making that gray scale, I'm just going to slide the yellow all the way to dark. And as you can see, it's calibrating the gray scale of the yellow towards um, this more contrasted gradation. So as you can see, this now, because it's solid black, it'll tell the printer to print solid yellow and it's going to be this, the equivalent of this bright yellow color. And the same with blue. So if you want your blue to be solid blue, you'll need to adjust, I'd say the blue um, slider here. And this is a little bit harder to work with because you're just going to have to eyeball the shades of gray to see if that's close to how dark or how light or how solid and how not solid you want your colors to print 
So it's a little bit more kind of a judgment call. Um, and to help you with that, you can go into the printing page and you can see, you can just take a look at this black gradation. And so whatever is here means this is kind of like what the colors are going to look like when you print it in solid black. And these are what the colors are going to look like at around 50%. And you can also look at the black to help you judge sort of what the colors will look like at different grayscale values. Now let's take a look at some examples of layering as well as the final product. A good rule of thumb is to give your printer a digital color proof so that we can check the final prints against it. Without a color proof, it's hard to say if we printed it right or if you did or didn't do your values correctly. Uh, by the way, this example is by Greer. Greer's website is at greerstothers.com. You can support Greer by buying her super, super cool merch at her shop, and you can also find the zine where this image is from at her shop or at z thezineclub.com, which is a cool new website that lets zine makers create their own storefront and sell zines. As you can see, Greer gave me a color proof and her file is already separated and grayscaled. And I can tell right away that she has her yellow correct because this yellow is fairly dark and she wants the lion to be fairly bright. So one way that I can tell that your file is not set up correctly is if I see that you have a pretty bright yellow but your yellow here was just straight up grayscaled and therefore it's gonna look super light like more like this so that's how i can just quickly take a look at your file and sort of guess if if you've set it up correctly this example is by bina bina's website is at binamystery.com and they're a combo pack UX designer and illustrator living in Toronto. As you can see, Bina has separated the colors appropriately and also provided a color proof, which is amazing. If you're interested in this zine, you can also find it at the Zine Club it's right here. So hopefully this tutorial as well as the examples of Bina and Greer's files have helped to show you how to set up files for risograph printing using Photoshop. In the next tutorial, we'll go through different ways of how to lay your zine out using Photoshop and InDesign. Thanks so much for watching. This is Olivia at pin.press.com. Signing off.